We come to the public participation part of the meeting. And so for all of those of you who are speaking, uh, what we'd love you to do is realise first of all that this is live streamed. So this is being, uh, you're going out to the, um, to anybody who's watching and actually some people do watch. And uh, so you're going to come here, you're going to get five minutes which you can speak about whatever you want to speak about. Um, but that, in, that includes any questions. So it's very brief, this initial Vox Pops start, so it's the, the section, okay? Right, so first we've got half of South Brighton um, is coming. <laughs> so we've got Jane, Leslie, Jason, Steve, Moira, Matt, and another Steve, Sergeant Steve. Okay guys, you know the rules here before. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And we're in your hands completely. And you'll see a wee timer of five minutes. Okay? Start with this. And you can start whenever you feel like it. This isn't included in our five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry to tell you it is, but I'll be kind. Go for it. <laughs> Still no volume. standing on the corner of Bridge Street and Estuary Road in South Brighton. Where I'm standing on this empty section, we used to have a lovely block of shops. It included a cafe, fish and chip shop, a dairy, a pharmacy, a small liquor store, basically everything a small community needs to keep itself well stocked. After the earthquakes, our block of shops was demolished and nothing has been built here to replace it. Behind me, you can see what was the Hosanna Baptist Church. This building has stood empty since the earthquakes and a lot of people in our community have been wondering is there any way we could use this building to help revitalise our community. We've recently been given the opportunity to take on a lease or perhaps buy into this building to be able to create a new community hub for South Brighton. Let's go inside and have a look. Our vision for this building includes having a lovely courtyard area outside, a cafe in this part of the building, a lovely performance venue and community space through in the other part of the building. We can have meeting spaces, we can have a learning space, a gallery space for local artworks and craftspeople, basically a place that our community can come together. In order for us to make this vision happen for our community, there are earthquake repairs that need doing on this building. The wall behind us is going to need replacing. We have a vision of bringing it back with a beautiful large stained glass window. On this side of the building there are significant foundation repairs that need to be done. We need your help. Smartlift NZ have offered to fix the foundations on a community building for free. If you vote for us you can help us make this vision come true for our community. Go to the Smartlift NZ Facebook page and vote for Tawaka Araha South Brighton. Together we can make this dream come true. Yay, and they did. And guess what? We won. <laughs> we won that competition. Oh, yeah. With over 2,270 votes um, from a community of 1,500 households. So um, today, I'm Jane, I'm from the Bridge South Brighton Trust, and we're really excited to come here today and to bring you this project. Um, and it's really exciting to be here, and we've got a lot of supporters behind us, but I also know that there are 2,270 odd people here today as well, because our entire community is so excited about this project. So this has been the image that people have become very familiar with now. Let's turn that old abandoned church into a stunning community hub for South Brighton. Wow. 
Okay, so who are we? Um, the ink is barely dry on the Bridge South Brighton Trust. Um, our documents have been signed off and they'll be registered and incorporated early next week. Um, we are a group of people who live in South Brighton who have a range of, of skills to offer to this group. Myself, um, I've been involved in community activities and education for many, many years. And along with Leslie Fulton, who's very actively involved in the Brighton community, we've been running Te Waka Araha South Brighton, which is a very vibrant and growing community group um, in the area. Steve Langridge, um, who's up behind us here, has been involved in the building industry for many, many years, and he worked um, over the last few years for Stream, so has been um, very involved in the project management kind of side of um, post-earthquake rebuilding. Moira McDougall uh, has a health background, physiotherapy and, um, and acupuncturist. She's very excited about the idea of the wellness centre that we're talking about. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, Steve Jones, again, you may recognise Steve. He's up behind us, ran the Rickerton Community or neighbourhood policing unit um, for the last four and a half, five years, has an incredible amount of experience in really bringing community, working with young people, working with communities to make safe and, and vibrant environments. Jason, I think a lot of you will know, um, he's giving us a lot of pro bono architect design consents advice, as also part of our trust, really important to have that. <coughs> Sue and Matt, um, who are in the circles there, we have a growing number, those circles in another, give us six months, there'll be a lot of those circles. We have a lot of people that may not live in the area or quite in the area or may not want to be on a trust board but who have real expertise to bring in and we will be gathering a lot of those people around us. So Sue is very connected with the local artistic community which is part of what we want to do. Matt um, is the director of, um, what are they called? Delta, sorry, <laughs> moment there. Delta Trust, um, I met Matt first when he was working um, with Sarah with the psychosocial, psychosocial unit. He um, manages and organises the Eastern Hub project that we've presented to you already this year. So a lot of expertise and I did want to introduce you to that group to know we've been working damn hard for six months on this and we have a lot of expertise behind us. Okay, so what is it we're talking about? The bridge, South Brighton, is going to be community owned and community managed. So the trust sees itself as the guardians of this facility for our community. Um, it's financially sustainable, multi-use, really multi-use, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, responsive, because it is being looked after and managed and owned by the local people, really responsive to the needs and wants of our local community, and very much focused on well-being and resilience in our community, the real positive stuff. Okay, it's going to incorporate a cafe. We have a local family already run a small cafe. They're third generation South Brighton people, um, two, two sisters and mum. They're really excited. Um, if, if for some reason they didn't take up that cafe, we have three other cafe people, um, lots of people sitting behind who want that. It's a fantastic spot to run a local cafe. Okay, there'll be a community information centre. Um, and as well as us providing community information for the community, we also want to gather information from the community and have ways there where we can actually get people to um, share their ideas and their thoughts about what's going on as well. It's going to be a learning centre. We run a learning exchange at Te Waka Araha, which is part of the Christchurch Resilience Plan, actually, and um, we do a lot of learning activities, so to continue those. A gallery space, an activity centre, so lots of um, kind of physical health type activities, um, crafts and just, just whatever. Jane, local, local we're well over five do. minutes already so you might just ah, want to okay, get to... Okay, performance venue, <laughs> office and meeting spaces in there, a wellness centre and a community hall that can be hired out. Okay, you don't need to read this. When we had an open day, we asked our local community to come in and give us ideas about what they'd like to see in the space. There was a heap of ideas. There's a lot of energy, there's a lot of excitement in South Brighton. We need a place to do this stuff. Okay, and the reason it can be so multi-use is this is just a plan of the place. There's a cafe, we'll have meeting rooms there. Um, there's, there's just so many different spaces in the building. We can run things during the day and then we can have, while the cafe's open, community activities going on, we can have health and wellbeing things going on at the back of that hall building. We can then use the kitchen, the commercial kitchen and the cafe at night for pop-up restaurants, for um, performances, for things that will bring money into the facility. We've been trialling some of this already. Okay. This is what's really important. We have a three-phase funding process. We've been doing a lot of work on this. Um, the reason we're here today is this one, phase one. Okay, we want to buy this building as is for $325,000. We think it's an incredible investment in our community, and we think that City Council may well have the capacity to do that for us. 
Okay. We have a seismic strengthening and earthquake repair phase, which is going to bring the building up to 100% of code. Okay. Of that 400,000, we've already got 240 of that in terms of pro bono, the smart lift donations. Um, we've got a this close to having um, a roof, a new roof, donated and, and, and laid free of charge. Okay, and then the full building fit out, so this is making it fit for purpose. We have an expression of interest in with Rata Foundation, who are very excited about that. In terms of the different places we're looking at for some of this funding, you've got that information with you. Mm. Okay, so we've handed that out to you because we've done a huge amount of work and this is a short amount of time. We're nearly there, Vicky. <laughs> We're nearly there. Okay, I'm talking really fast, but I have to. Just to finish, <laughs> I just this is the last thing. I do want to let you know we've got leaders of support for this project from the local school, from the local um, surf club, from the local kindergarten, preschool, the residents association, from the community board, from elected members, from the um, from Poto Williams, from all sorts of community groups. People love this idea okay and just a couple of quotes we're doing a survey at the moment for community consultation and we said to people in the survey we're going to go to talk to the council we're going to talk to funders do you have anything that we'd like to that you'd like us to say okay I will no no don't out. tell us what they were because actually you're nearly at 10 minutes and it just sets a really amazing precedent for everybody else who comes behind you but what I'm going to suggest is I, I think Probably there's a lot of support around the table just by the body language of the people watching you. So what I'm going to suggest is that, uh, Gary, you're obviously um, involved with this group. Mm -hmm. yep. Can you just bring a report to um, Andrew's committee? Mm. Yep. Because obviously there's some financial implications here that are not on budget. <laughs> And the CEO is not here either. <laughs> Can we include the capital endowment fund as an option in yes, that report? Yes, yes, of course, of Great. course you should. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think you've done a superb presentation. I'm really sorry that I've got to limit it because the energy is just um, contagious. Um, well, like I said, two thousand two hundred and six. Yeah, no, no, behind this. <laughs> <laughs> completely got that. Um, so what I'm going to suggest is that Gary brings a report to Andrew's committee. You're very welcome to come along to that committee as well. Is that okay? Yeah. When, when do you want a timeline for that, Gary? Uh, I'll probably have to talk to Claire. <laughs> Teach you to sit there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, I need, I need to talk to the funding team to get that information together. Right. We'll bring it as quickly as we can. The, the next CHED meeting is the 4th of August. I don't know whether you could get it there that quickly. If we could have even the beginnings of a conversation about it, that would be good because obviously the, there's, um, it looks as though there's support for what's been presented. There are some questions we've been presented with that um, we'd be keen to look at how we can answer those. So even if it was just a, a relatively short report that was able to come to the 4th of August meeting, it would be good to start progressing some conversation around it. Well, there's something for you for the 4th of August. Fantastic. Hey, Thank you. It's a can-do man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very impressive. Thank you. Um, okay, Janet Big and Paul McNow. Welcome. <coughs> Hello, Paul. Hello, oh, Janet. Good morning, everyone. I'm Janet Big. I'm a bus user. And with me is Paul McNow, who's the chief executive of our Red Bus Limited. Firstly, my dream is to bring back our inner city bus shuttle circuit, a free bus service of electric shuttle buses that run at least every 10 minutes in both directions, a service that has at its very heart the bus users, that's the bus drivers and the passengers together in a symbiotic relationship. My big dream is of two figure eight circuits covering the areas within the four avenues, but I know that's too large an area for now. However, Paul McNow is our best advocate and most practical manager to give you a good picture of what we can make happen soon. Remember that the Red Bus and the Christchurch City Council together ran the popular city bu shuttle buses before the earthquakes. Paul, would you please give us your professional view? <laughs> <laughs> Last week, well Janet twisted Janet. my arm, so this is very much a conceptual um, proposal, if you like. Um, and really, it's an, I think it's an appropriate time to start thinking about the kind of last mile connection between the bus interchange and the kind of central city as it's recovered. So, sorry, I haven't got a presentation on That's the screen, right. but what you have in front of you is a, a bit of a, a summary of uh, where we're at. So, in terms of sort of just thinking about where the city is at the moment, the target audience seems to me to be 
shifting workers between the central city, um, around the central city. Um, visitors and tourists, secondary, um, retail are uh, a lower priority currently, but that'll, that'll, we think, grow over time. And there's also a bit of hospitality work as well, potentially. So I've got a, a bit of a map of what a service might look like that could be implemented quite quickly. It covers um, uh, the areas like, like the West End area, Victoria Street, Margaret Mahi, uh, playground and New Regent Street, connecting that through to the the bus interchange. So effectively, the last last mile transport. Uh, as I say, it's very conceptual. Um, and in terms of what a, a bus service might look like, um, a one bus service gives you about a 30 minute cycle. A two bus service gives a, a 15 minute cycle. Uh, and from a practical perspective, I think you sort of counter rotate those. So you've got and going in both directions in terms of making sure people have reasonable uh, um, travel times. Um, been a lot of talk about what you would use. I uh, would be recommending something like a smaller accessible bus, a bit like the Mercedes buses that are just going into service now as a, as a kind of starting position. Yeah. Uh, uh, clearly, there's quite a bit of more work needs to be done on the route and the, and the demand. Uh, but if that conceptual uh, drawing uh, route were in, put in place, there are additional bus stops required to service the, those areas, and that's a commitment. Um, you could have, it would be relatively simple to connect real-time information to the system as well uh, as also. So I think kind of from here, it, it's, if council thinks the concept's worth pursuing, it seems to me you've, there's now a joint public transport working committee and that's the appropriate place for it to land. No, it's um, not. So it's a bit of work around uh, just putting some muscles around this and then, then putting that proposal forward. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Excellent. Are there any questions, given that you've got one minute 45? Yep. A um, couple of things. With regards to the circuit, if we had a two bus circuit going opposite directions, yep. could you then expand this so there'd be different streets? So there would be a join up like a figure eight, or, or abstract figure eight. So if you wanted to go somewhere, you could actually swap buses. Uh, conceivably, you could do that. Uh, and it's really a case of you know where, whether this is the right mix that we have now. And part of that's constrained by the one way street system to some extent. And the second question is. I, I presume it would be vital, the main airport bus stop, which is on, I believe, Manchester Street, wherever it is, in Central City, I, I would be, it would have to be essential for this to go past it so those guests in our city could get off and hop on a bus and get a, a good service to one of the hotels. That's get right, so I'd see as the, the bus ex current bus exchange is being a central point, so that would be a pick-up and drop-off point on the way, th on th whichever direction you're travelling through. So if you're in that area, you can then progress on. From there. Okay. Phil, I'll give it you. Thank you, Paul. Um, just in terms of it coming, say, to the Joint Public Transport Committee, which you are uh, suggesting, mm. so I'm assuming that part of, the ration, part of the things that the committee would need to look at, and you can tell me what sort of things, but would partly be at least though that this, this new route in the inner city would be aligned with the other routes that are decided by ECAN. Clearly, you need to take those into account. We so would need you, to you take weren't into duplicating account. activity, absolutely. Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. Indeed. Thank you. So it's really particularly filling in those spaces where there's cu no current service, uh, particularly the West End, for example. There's, there's no, it's a, it's a long walk, and on a wet day, it's uh, not going to be comfortable Indeed. with people carrying yeah. goods. Five it's seconds. Difficult. Three okay. seconds. Two. Two. Okay. okay, you've started, so I'll let you finish. <laughs> 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 there was some feedback that I received last week that there is a disconnect at the moment between New Regent Street, Isaac Theatre Royal, that kind of area where the Ibis is as well, and the restart and Victoria Street as far as tourists not knowing what that year. And I see though that the ITR is just on the outside of that. Mm. Do you see that there could be some sort of uh, synergy, if you like, with this providing a service where tourists could be shuttled those short distances, or do you see that as a separate? Oh, it's certainly intended to, to cover that. I think the tourist, I mean, that's a very seasonal activity, right. uh, and it's growing, so that's going to become more important over time. It seems to me, just thinking and looking at the city, it's the transport of people at, on the work position that's probably the critical thing. Could it be accommodated, though, do you think? Right. Well, it's certainly intended here. It's going past New Regent Street. Right. Um, and it's certainly not far from, um, from uh, Isaac yeah, Theatre Royal. Yeah. Okay, thank Paul you. Paul Goodenby I'll let you go because it's your it's ward. It's just, just really a comment. It's really like a, a normal to for the central city, connecting all the city assets. Really, that's what it is. Trying it? to do that, yes, in a reasonable way, which is constraining it, so you've got a good cycle time without spending okay. too much time for the people. Thank you for coming along. Um, what I'm going to suggest, uh, Phil, do you want this to go to Itty before it goes anywhere near? 
the ECAN group? Well, since it's an area of the city, it's very appropriate, goes to it, it yeah. and, um, and what I'm alluding to too, and Paul has confirmed that, that clearly for it to be aligned, there'll be another step after the Infrastructure Transport Environment Committee, so, but I'm happy for it to take that sort of process. Oh. So how would you like to invite Paul and Janet to the next meeting? You're meeting? very welcome to come to our okay. next meeting. Um, yeah. Would they seek a deputation, perhaps? Yeah. Yeah? You could certainly make a deputation as well. Or just come and have a chat. Mm. Yeah, so you've got a well, bit longer. I think I think even talking further discussion informally at this stage would be really helpful too. Okay. I mean, this is very conceptual and, and I have yep. a week to think about it, so uh, if it's not perfect, I yeah. apologise for no. that. But no, don't even slightly apologise. I love the idea of using the little the little buses. Yep. Mm. That'd be so yes. cool. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, I've got Anna, but it's actually Jude and Justin for the green prescription. Welcome. Hi, I'm Jude Wasney, and I'm a consumer of green prescription, and I'm hoping that you'll give me my, your help. And this is Justin. He works for green prescription. Okay, um, I became very sick and my doctor put my um, and had to give up smoking after 50 years. Just about killed me then. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I put on a lot of weight. I swapped food for my cigarette. And um, so my doctor put me into a green prescription um, and it's run by Sports Canterbury. And uh, anyway, I learned a lot. The council talk about obesity and what can we do? Put in the cycle lane, you know, we have footpaths, you know, improve them. But not everybody can walk, not everybody can cycle because of hips, um, the knees, their legs, you know, people have been hurt in the earthquakes, um, their lives have changed. And so they need to. Um, adjust to those changes and not put on weight because I for one know and um, so it's, I actually feel it's no good talking about it. I went to Green Prescription and um, it was wonderful. I've lost 10 kg Yay. and yeah it's so good <laughs> and um, it also has help, helps with uh, depression and anxiety. You only get to go to this little course once so I've become a volunteer so I can go all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but the um, unfortunate part about this is that um, to do some of the things is cost. And not everybody is retired and has a gold card. Not everybody actually has a community services card. Okay? So what can you do? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> You've got the facilities that we need. You have the swimming pools. They are weightless. People, when they're in there, it doesn't matter about their hips. It doesn't matter about how big they are. They're still weightless. And we also, I go, um, and this is a cost, I go to um, there where I can do my own aqua jogging because council have these boards that you can do it yourself. Now, where I want you to help is I want you to reduce it down to three dollars but I want it that I will help you out <coughs> where it will be um, certain days, certain times like say Monday to Thursday um, 9 to 11 and then 1.30 to 3 and so those times um, I want to see um, absolutely um, the, oh, what is it, like, it's three dollars, when I say this, it's like you can go there and there's one person in the pool, right? You've got staff there. What are they doing? Maximising the... Nothing. <laughs> so it's better to have 20 in there than one, isn't it? If you get 60 bucks from that, you get 580 from that lot. Right? Does it make sense, Mr Finance? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so I'm hoping that this council is going to show that you care. Care about us. And that you're willing to do this. 
and you're willing to put people first. And when you talk about what are we going to do about obesity, you've got the answer. You can help everybody. You've got cycle lanes, you've got footpaths, and you've got $3 for the green prescription people. And there are many. And the conditions would be, green prescription would do cards. If you don't have your card, left it at home or anything, too bad, you pay full price. You must have a green prescription card. Okay? The, um, it's called no prescription card, no discount. <laughs> um, is it a want? Is it a need? Well, we want it and we need it. It's as simple as that. Okay? Any questions? <laughs> Clear. It seemed pretty clear to us. I think we're all too scared to ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you just go ahead. <laughs> She's not. Yes, oh, yeah. sorry, Yanni. Great. Um, thank you. Thank you for your <laughs> deputation. Um, I know we've actually asked for a report um, through the annual plan to get a report back on fees and charges, so it's really timely that you've made that submission or deputation. I just wanted to check in terms of the green prescription, mm -hmm. who can access that? Because you said in, um, to start with you only have a limited time, so I was just interested if it was only for a limited time, then someone has to get their card back, or whether there's a way that people could actually so have a longer longer time to access. No, no the, uh, no, the little course we have, you can go and do all things. We have buddy systems, right. people, um, we've just had a course, uh, and we've just had this course, and woman, we couldn't even get out the door. Um, now, she's into aqua jogging, and she's um, all over the place, you know, and we have a buddy system from the ones on the course, and they're doing badminton, they're, and they're all joining together. So the prescription goes on, but there's only an eight week course right, and then we you. hope to match everyone thank up you. to what they're doing bring them up hey do you want to go walking today do you want to go badminton tonight whatever so as long as people are active they could have yeah, those so green prescription anyone cards. can access it it's yeah. basically we're a free support service to help people <coughs> work on um, healthier lifestyles it generally comes to the gp but yeah open to anyone thank you yeah so you can come too yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right yeah yeah okay Thank you. The five minutes is up. Can I just suggest that what might be useful, given that there is this report coming, is that we ask for uh, the report to include the impact of reducing fees for those people with a green prescription. Yeah? Is that okay? Yeah, that's awesome. And Thank you. Because you, well, you mentioned about when the um, when the, the numbers and the pools are down, so it's a win-win for everybody. Yes. So could we get that from our staff with regards to what time? I'm going to do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a time frame kind of for that report? Uh, Just in a general sense? Within no. That would be good because I don't want to we wait forever. We'll we, don't, we don't at the we moment, don't, but we'll get back to you. Might put on wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so I'm just assuming we've passed that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much indeed. Thanks for listening. Lovely to meet you. Okay. <laughs>